Hello everyone, welcome to the next session on finite element analysis. In this session, we are going to discuss about axisymmetric elements in FEA. In this session, we are going to discuss about axisymmetric elements in FEA. In the context of FEA, an axisymmetric element is a type of finite element that is designed to model structures or components with axisymmetric geometries and loading conditions. Axisymmetric elements are particularly useful for problems where the geometry can be generated by revolving a two-dimensional shape around an axis to create a three-dimensional shape. You must have learned the revolve option while learning modeling. That is, you create a 2D body and along a particular axis, say X or Y, you are going to revolve the body and create a 3D shape. So that concept is used in axisymmetric element. The axisymmetric element is a simplification that takes advantage of the symmetry of the problem, reducing the computational cost compared to a fully three-dimensional analysis. Basically, here we do not use a revolve option, but instead of that, we go for axisymmetric element option. So what we do is we are going to reduce the computational cost of using a 3D body. So we are just going to visualize something over here. As we go through the lecture, you will understand. The primary characteristics of axisymmetric elements include the following. The first and the foremost is geometry. Axisymmetric elements are defined in a two-dimensional plane, typically using cylindrical or polar coordinates, that is R theta, instead of Cartesian coordinates, x, y. The geometry of the element is assumed to be rotationally symmetric about an axis. Now suppose if I have created this geometry and there is a y-axis over here about which I can revolve this body and create a 3D shape. So this is the geometry which is to be created. Now when I use the axisymmetric option and I want to see half of the body, this is how it looks like. Both of them indicate the same shape. It's just the orientation is used to help you understand that this is of 3D type. Because in this part, you may not understand that it is 3D. So you can now see that it is of 3D type. And when I see the entire body in 37 revolutions, you would see that this is the entire shape that is created. But the geometry essentially remains 2D. This is a 2D aspect of it. And this is the three-dimensional aspect of it. This is what is going to remain over the entire analysis. This is something which you will just click on an option and visualize. Next comes the loading. Loading conditions such as pressure, forces and displacements are applied in the axisymmetric plane and are symmetric about the axis of rotation. So basically, when you rotate the entire body and you create a 3D effect, so at that point, where you are rotating, there you are going to apply your boundary conditions and it is going to remain same over the entire 3D effect. The loadings are usually applied in terms of forces per unit length or pressure. So I will give you the example of the same body that I have. This is the 2D body that we had. This is of a pressure vessel actually. So if you know that a pressure vessel is subjected to pressure from inside. So I have shown internal zone subjected to pressure of 0.02 megapascal. Next, if I have a pressure vessel, it needs to be subjected to some force from above such that the pressure vessel doesn't burst open. So this is a force of 100 Newton being applied from the top zone. And here at this zone, I'm going to apply fixed. So you can also consider this as an LPG cylinder wherein the bottom portion is fixed. There is internally gas which is now stored as a liquid so it is going to apply some pressure from inside and you have a stopper or a knob at the top which is used for holding the pressure inside so these are the three boundary conditions that i have applied next comes degree of freedom axisymmetric elements have both radial and circumferential degrees of freedom at each node the displacement field includes both radial and circumferential components so you are going to have only two components in fact over here, one is radial and one is 
circumferential that is this body can burst open in this way because of some stresses also it can burst open in this direction because of some stresses so one is radial and one is circumferential you will get a proper idea of this when you go through the strength of material subject and you study about thin cylinders and spherical shells then you will get a complete idea of this degree of freedom of axisymmetric element formulation the stiffness matrix and elemental equations are derived based on axisymmetric nature of problem the governing equations are often formulated in terms of radial and circumferential coordinates so this is about the stiffness matrix which is used in axisymmetric element i'll explain you this in some other session in detail so that you can understand what is the governing differential equation and how it is used for making of the stiffness matrix for analysis in fea of axisymmetric element then comes meshing the mesh generation for axisymmetric problems involves creating a two dimensional mesh that represents a cross section of the axisymmetric structure elements are distributed radially and circumferentially to capture the geometry effectively i have shown you here how the meshing is done it is covering the radial and the circumferential elements both and it is going to create a mesh such that your entire body is covered you can give any element size over here such that you get finer meshes and you get better results i am showing you one of the results that i have of a pressure vessel that i have created and this is the strain obtained so now when you see the result it is shown in the 3d form the body is still a 2d body but you are getting results in the 3d form so what you do is you are just creating a visualization over here while solving in answers and you are getting the results so basically you save on the computation cost and time of a 3d body also it would have been difficult if you imagine that you have a 3d body and you need to apply the pressure from inside some kind of force or some kind of a fixed over here it would have been really difficult if you have a 3d body and directly you have to analyze so the best way to analyze these kind of 3d bodies is by using axisymmetric element now we will see certain applications of this axisymmetric elements are commonly used for analyzing components with rotational symmetry such as pipes pressure vessels and cylindrical structures these elements are beneficial for reducing computational costs while still providing accurate results for axisymmetric problems this is one of the diagram which i have which i have actually analyzed and i showed you so that is of all the spherical vessel so what are the takeaways from this lecture now when using fa software for axisymmetric analysis Users typically specify the axisymmetric nature of the problem during the model setup and the software automatically applies the appropriate equations and formulations for axisymmetric elements. So I'll give you the link for this analysis that I have. You can go through the entire video and you will understand that I have just selected the options of axisymmetric and the software at the back end already had the equations of axisymmetric elements so it was able to analyze and give me the results. It's important to note that while axisymmetric elements are powerful for certain types of problems they are not suitable for analyzing structures with non axisymmetric features or complex three dimensional behaviors so when you have a three dimensional body or you don't have a symmetrical body then you cannot use this feature at all in such cases a full three dimensional analysis with standard finite elements may be required so you cannot help in that kind of a situation but if you have a symmetric body like i showed you you can definitely use this feature and save on time and cost of the analysis so with this i end the session i hope you have understood what are axisymmetric elements in fea if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon for latest video updates see you in the next session thank you